and succeed. Sustainability means that things can keep going, can sustain themselves. Sustainable projects are projects that develop the capacity of the local people so that when you eventually are not there anymore, they can continue to thrive and continue to develop. That's the level of social sustainability. And environmental sustainability means that they're, you know, they're not using unrenewable resources, they're not uh, poisoning the land, that, they're, that they can continue farming or manufacturing whatever they're doing um, for the next you know, 50 or 100 years without uh, using up the resources and without destroying the environment. The, the Jewish environmental field is blossoming. It's really growing, many different groups growing and many people trying to do really important things all around the world. And uh, the time has come for us to be able to collaborate effectively together. Um, and so we try to embody that in the work that we do uh, by not only teaching our participants practical skills of sustainability, such as gardening, composting, natural building, um, but also teaching them the larger uh, kind of global issues uh, related to sustainable food production so that they understand how sustainable agriculture is also a social, social justice issue and an economic issue. And also it would include spiritual. I think when we talk about Jewish continuity, that's a form of Jewish sustainability. Um, these traditions that mandated that the farmer who was taking care of the land, so it was responsible for being an environmental steward of that land, was also responsible for sharing the harvest in an equitable way. Whether they were tithing 10% of the produce, leaving the corner of the field, uh, leaving the gleanings for the poor to come, or the forgotten crops. And these are four different areas of Jewish harvesting laws that mandate that we can't keep uh, the harvest all ourselves, that it has to be shared. For it to be a Jewish farm, it has to be a Jewish community farm, it has to be sharing that produce. The Jewish environmental community has an opportunity to be a force for good in addressing this challenge. The, today's Jewish environmental movement began with an open letter to the religious community, which was in 1990, where the scientists and the politicians were turning to the religious community, looking for um, input from the religious community and guidance and leadership from the religious community on this environmental issue. They felt like these problems were so large and so um, complicated that they really needed to be understood as having a moral dimension. And the religious community has an important role to play in that, and the Jewish environmental movement has really grown up out of that call, a response to that call. And um, so I think that the Jewish teachings have a lot to offer. So again, when we think about sustainability in this very holistic way, I think Shemitah is the cornerstone of that um, in Jewish tradition, because it's not just an agricultural law telling us to let the fields lay fallow. It's also an economic law where we forgive all the debt. Um, and it's a social law because in that one year, you have the rich and the poor from this community basically having equal access to all the resources. So what would it look like in a society if once every seven years the richest people and the poorest people sat at the same table and ate the same food? What would that do to the social makeup of the society? The blueprint for a community in Judaism is one where the rights of the individual are preserved but they're not uh, put on a pedestal. It's actually the needs of the community that are addressed first and foremost. And so uh, through the Shemitah year, we have essentially a mechanism in place to prevent people from falling into deep cycles of poverty. Um, in the United States right now, one of the challenges is that people who grow up poor, grow up in poverty, have a very hard time climbing out of it. First of all, we don't learn any, anything about money in our schools. So we learn money from our parents. So if our parents weren't very good with money, we inherit a lot of their practices. Um, secondly, the way that the American economy is, is so dependent on cycles of debt, where you have people who have huge amounts of debt and they're paying off the interest every month, they're not able to climb out of that debt and they get deeper and deeper into debt. Essentially, Shemitah eliminates that. It says that when, if, I, if I need money and I borrow money from you, and at the end of the, at, at the Shemitah year, if I haven't been able to pay it back to you, it's erased. Because it's not about you making a lot of money, it's not about me making a lot of money, it's about all of us together being able to live together sustainably forever. And so Shemitah, and then even on a more extreme level, Yovel, the Jubilee year, which happens every 50 years, is a giant economic reset button. It's not 
pure socialism or communism. It's not um, free market capitalism, but it's some sort of hybrid that allows for people to um, kind of do their thing for six years um, and recognizes that different people are motivated in different ways and some people will acquire more wealth and other people won't. And some people might make some bad decisions and then get into economic struggle. But uh, after, once we hit that Shemitah year, we get to start over again. And to me, that's kind of the mechanism for uh, long-term holistic sustainability. I think that we face a really significant sustainability crisis in our society. And I actually think it's, it's, it's one of the most significant challenges facing us as a global community today. Um, we're using resources at a pace that's truly unsustainable. Um, we're using up resources that have been here for thousands of years um, at a pace that they could never be replenished fast enough. And so we have to find some way to live as a, as a human race, really, lighter on the planet, to use fewer resources so there'll be enough resources for future generations figure out a way to use renewable energy, for example, or to save water and, and um, reuse water in really um, more sustainable ways, to figure out ways to keep the air clean and other things that are really important to make sure that there will be a, a healthy and safe world for our children and grandchildren and for us today as well.